Well, I'm very happy to get to this slide because it's the last slide, and this has been without a doubt the longest chapter. I don't think any other chapter of our 29 chapters will be as long as 18 clips. Perhaps the GI systemic or the central nervous system chapter will be as long, but this has been a hell of a chapter. And I felt a little frustrated in that I could not go into all of these individual organisms in more detail. Uh, so that's that, I'm sorry. I think <laughs> this one might be a good time to review our basic uh, taxonomy and remember that technically a metazoan is any member of the animal kingdom that has more than one cell. So there's two kinds of animals. There's protozoans and there's metazoans. Protozoans have one cell. Metazoans have multiple, more than one. So that includes us technically, doesn't it? But in terms of practical parasitology, the metazoans are the worms. And going back to taxonomy again, if you remember, there's three kinds of worms, three phylum of worms the round worms, which are round, the flat worms, which are flat, and then the kind of worms we see in our garden, which are called annelids. But as far as I know, the annelid worms, which are the highest developed segmented worms, don't really cause any human infections. I might be wrong, but basically it's round worms and flat worms. And the round worms are the nematodes, and the flat worms are the trematodes. So with the exception of the tapeworms, which we've already went into in terms of the beef tapeworm, the pork tapeworm, the fish tapeworm, and of course the most common tapeworm in the United States called the dwarf tapeworm. All the rest of these things we'll finish up now are roundworms, are the roundworm metazoans. Uh, it wouldn't be fair if I just didn't mention that there's a couple of other worm roundworm parasites that are worth mentioning, so we'll mention them. Uh, Strangeloides stercoralis species usually. The Strangeloides worms are roundworms. They basically are inhabitants of your small bowel. You pick them up by uh, walking on grass barefoot uh, where the worms actually can get into your skin uh, through maybe small cracks or lesions and they can cause a local infection or itching and eventually they wind up setting shop in your intestine and living there and usually asymptomatic but sometimes they could not only be symptomatic but destructive depending on your immune system. So just remember Strangeloides stercoralis also known as the thread worm. We've talked about the tapeworms, the flatworms, so let's move on to trichinosis. Trichinosis, as you know, in the United States, is obtained from eating undercooked pork. It's because the larvae of these uh, roundworms live in the skeletal muscle of pigs. And if you don't cook the um, skeletal muscle, the meat, well enough, you can be infected by the worms. And of course, once they're in humans, they can also infect a human skeletal muscle as well. So that's worth mentioning. Last but not least, two types of roundworms, generally both called flukes, uh, schistosomiasis disease and filariasis disease. Schistosomiasis uh, is not common in this country, but it's common in Asia, Africa, South America. It's a very, very prevalent worldwide disease. I think I heard the statistic that potentially a billion people could be exposed to it, and it infects millions. Also called Bilharzia, B-I-L-H-A-R-Z-I-A, or the disease Bilharziosis. <coughs> it's also called snail fever because the snail is the vector of the disease. It uh, winds up uh, having a human infection, which could, uh, of all uh, places involve uh, bladder uh, infections as well. And the bladder, in the places where schistosomiasis is rampant, responds to the infection by undergoing metaplasia. And that's squamous metaplasia, not transitional or glandular metaplasia, but that transition, that squamous metaplasia can then give rise or be the soil for the development of squamous cell cancer of the bladder. So make a long story short, even though you don't see it in the United States, 
uh, probably the vast majority of squamous cell carcinomas of the bladder arose in the setting of a previous schistosome infection. And last but not least, we'll talk about filariasis, or filarial worms. These are small worms. The most common species is Wucheria bancrofti. It's a nematode, or a roundworm. And the filarial, or thread-like worm, I believe it's also called threadworm, uh, infects the uh, lymphatics, the dermal lymphatics and other lymphatics of skin and subcutaneous tissue and organs. And as a result, the skin then become very edematous and saggy or elephant-like. So the uh, term elephantiasis uh, in its pure form refers to boggy, droopy, edematous skin because the lymphatics are all plugged up by the uh, larvae or the these little filarial worms. And I don't think you can pick up a pathology book anywhere uh, and turn to the chapter on infectious disease or uh, parasitology without seeing a guy who has a scrotum going down to his knees or his ankles, and that's because of the tremendous uh, lymph edema due to filariasis. Okay, so, you know, that pretty much finishes the entire chapter on infectious diseases. Um, I think what we have discussed, even though a lot of it wasn't in depth, is things you should generally know or be aware of, or what I would consider common knowledge, or if you don't mind the expression, board knowledge. And uh, I had a... Um, I had fun doing this chapter, and I'm looking forward to moving on to the next one. So I thank you very much.